And so, ladies and gentlemen, we're really excited to see um, so many people from, like, this has been our most wide range of people from um, all over Canada and now into the United States that are joining to Connected North at Home. We're really glad that you're here. I want to introduce you to JT Turner. He is one of our, whoops, your light. One of my lights went crazy. One of the lights went crazy. But he is a storyteller, an actor, um, a, an amazing person. He teaches uh, Qigong and Tai Chi. And today he's going to tell us a story about how uh, Tai Chi came to be through animals. And there, there's a great book that you could maybe look for online. And it's what he was going to, um, he's gonna talk about that. And Annette, I see you're in the Q and A. Um, you yes. don't need too much room. Um, hi, Annette, it's good to see you. And Katie will be thrilled that you're here. So if you have any questions, ladies and gentlemen, if you could post them in the chat, that would be great. That's what I will be monitoring as well. Um, and, but we're just gonna participate with JT. So over to you, JT. Thank you. I'm going to adjust my light a little bit as best I can. Hopefully that's, that's a little better. We're, uh, we're working from home these days as so many people are. Hi to everyone. My name is JT Turner. I am a storyteller. And I tell stories from all around the world to people all over the world. Today, I'm really excited to share a story with you. And I do mean that, to share a story with you. I'm going to need your help for us to tell this story together. This story is called The Journey of Chen. And this particular story, as I'm going on, you'll learn that Chen has to remember a few things as he's taking a walk. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. But pretty soon, we'll all be able to do some gentle movement together. So I call this the journey of Chen. Once upon a time, there was a young man, and his name was Chen. And Chen lived in a small house high on a mountainside. And Chen loved it there. He loved being up there looking around at the other beautiful mountains and the valley below him as well. Uh, he loved to sit all day and he read. He had dedicated his whole life into reading and studying, but after a while, Chen didn't feel very good. He spent his whole day reading books and sort of hunched over and, and, and reading as best he could, but after a while, his shoulders started to hurt, his back started to bother him, and his neck was always kind of crunched up. He wished he felt better. He, he actually would fall asleep in the middle of the afternoon just because he seemed so tired all the time. Well, one day Chen had to visit his grandmother who lived in the valley just below the mountainside he lived on. He went down to see her and the minute he walked in her house, his grandmother said, Chen, you look horrible. What are you talking about, said Chen. You look horrible, said his grandmother. You haven't been taking care of yourself at all. You know how grandmothers can always tell that sort of thing, right? Anyway, Chen said, well, I don't know what to do about it. I do feel kind of crunched up and run down a little bit, but, but, but I like reading all day. You need some exercise, his grandmother said. Oh, said Chen, no, no, nothing, nothing like exercise. Please, Grandma, you listen to me, she said. You go for a walk around the lake. And as you go on this walk around the lake, I want you to remember every single animal that you see. What, said Chen, you want 
me to go for a walk around the lake and just remember animals? Yes, said the grandmother. You remember every animal you see. All right, said Chen, I may as well. And he started to walk. Can you all start walking with me? Can we start walking together? All right, we'll just lift our feet and shift our weight from side to side so we don't have to move anywhere. We're just pretending we're walking. And as he walked along, Chen still felt kind of crunchy, so his shoulders were a little bit slumped and he was swinging his arms. And then as he walked along, he began to feel a little better and he found himself standing a little taller and he, he liked the feeling of the sunshine on his face. And as he walked along, he thought his grandmother told him something, what was it again? Oh, that's right, remember the animals you see. And just up ahead, there was a farm and he saw a boy and the boy was using a couple of brushes and he was stroking out the mane of a beautiful horse. Oh, said Chen, all right, this is the first thing I'm seeing. I'm seeing a boy and he is combing the mane of a horse. How am I supposed to remember that? Chen thought, and then he, he, he took his hands and he, he, he let them face each other like he was holding a horse's neck, and he let one hand drop down a little bit as the other hand went away a little bit. Oh, well, well that's a good way to remember it, that I saw a boy and the boy was stroking this horse's mane. Can you do that with me? And as our palms are sort of facing each other, maybe we'll start them down here at our chest. And let your bottom hand go up as you step to the side and your other hand go down towards your waist. That's it. Let's try it in the other direction. Switch your hands, step to the side, let one hand that's on the bottom goes up and the other hand goes down. You're all doing great. Let's do it a couple more times. And remember the first thing Chen saw was a boy stroking a horse's mane or parting a horse's mane. Our hands face each other. We step out and we separate our hands. You're really good at this. Couple more times with that. Step and part that horse's mane. That's great. Hands face each other again. Step, the bottom hand drift up and the other hand drift towards your waist. Oh, thought Chen, this is great. That's a good way for me to remember what's going on on my walk. So Chen, he kept walking. And will you walk with me again? And he walked a little bit further, and he looked over, and in the lake he saw a beautiful sight. He saw a beautiful white crane, a big bird, and the bird was sitting there in the sun with its wings spread open, just drying its wings. And Chen thought, oh, okay, I see a big white bird. It's called a crane or something like that. And I've got to remember, it's drying its wings. And Chen let his hands face each other for a minute over to the side. Can you do this with me? And our hands face each other. Then one hand went down, and the other hand just opened up a little bit. And we pretend we have these big, giant wings. And let's take the foot that's by the upraised hand and just point our toes and stick it forward. And lean back and enjoy the sun for a second. That's wonderful. Let's try it on the other side. Our hands are facing each other. One hand goes up, the other hand goes down. We point our foot and lean back like we are a big white bird. <sighs> just relaxing in the sun. Couple more times with that. Palms facing each other, 
and we spread our wings. Be sure and point your toe and lean back a little bit. That's terrific. One last time. Our palms are facing each other. One floats down, one opens up, and we just dry our feathers in the sun. So Chen thought, great, great. And that's two things I've seen, and I'm sure I'll be able to remember both of those. He kept walking along a little bit. And as he walked along, it was a beautiful day, and he saw beautiful clouds going by up in the air. And what, what was that? Did, Chen could have sworn that he saw a dragon playing up in the clouds. And that's impossible, thought Chen. A dragon's just an imaginary animal, but grandmother said to remember everything that I saw, so I should give it a try. How, how will I remember dragons playing in the sky? And he took one of his hands and he let it kind of drift across his face, like it was a dragon, maybe. Oh, what to do with the other hand? Maybe as this hand is a dragon playing up in the clouds, th this other hand can follow along. And then over here, they could float past each other. That's it. And now the dragon is playing in the clouds again. My other hand drifts along below my waist, and over here, they switch. Turn the waist. Let your dragon play high up in the clouds, just like Chen did. Chen thought, this is great. This will be the perfect way to remember to tell my grandmother, I thought I saw dragons playing high up in the clouds. Let's try it one more time. Our hands go past each other. We turn at the waist. That's it. Now, if you really want to be fancy and silly, because who doesn't, see what happens if you make that top hand that's going past your eyes swoopy like a dragon, whatever a dragon might look like to you. Does it go up and down like this? Does it go sideways? Just let your dragon play up there in the clouds. All right, said Chen. I'm doing a good job, I think, of trying, uh, of trying to remember all these things. So he kept walking along thinking, what can I see next on my walk? Chen didn't even notice that he already felt a little bit better, a little bit more active. And up ahead, he saw a beautiful tree. And then, and then Chen saw something that made him a little uncomfortable because I don't know if you like them or not, but the next thing that Chen saw was a snake. And snakes are fine, but snakes make Chen a little bit nervous, to be honest with you. But as he watched, the snake curled its tail around a branch, and then it kind of slithered down towards the ground. Oh, said Chen, that would be a good way for me to remember the next thing I saw on my journey. There's a snake and it hooks its tail. Can you do this with me? We'll grab it. I keep my, I keep my fingers a little bit open so I can see through them and hold it up here. And the rest of the snake, the body of the snake is going to go across my body and I'm stepping out and maybe it goes down towards my leg a little bit and up to maybe my waist. Let's try it again. It hooks around a branch and then the snake goes down towards the ground. Wonderful. You are doing a great job at this. Our 
snake's tail, and then the body of the snake as it goes down toward the ground. And one more time together. The snake hooks its tail and slithers down towards the ground. Oh, thought Chen. Well, that's great. I'll have to remember to tell grandmother I saw a snake. And he walked on a little more quickly than he had been walking earlier in his journey. And he was truthfully a little glad to leave the snake behind him. But he kept continuing on. And pretty soon in front of him, he saw a, a sort of a field and a barn. And in the barn, he saw a beautiful rooster with sort of golden colored feathers. And the rooster was standing there, very proud and tall on one leg. And looked at it and he thought, all right, I'm seeing this very proud rooster. How can I, how can I remember this? He looked at the way the rooster was standing sort of proudly, and he thought he had an idea. If he lifted one leg up here and took one hand and he let his elbow and his knee sort of find each other, and with the other hand, he just sort of pushed down a little bit towards the ground. And those might be the rooster's wings, right? So this might remind him of a rooster standing really proudly. Don't worry if you have trouble doing this stance. I fall out of it all the time. But let's give it a try. Let's try it on the other side. There's this leg standing up nice and tall, and this, oh, and this elbow and hand up like this, and my other hand presses down. And as Chen was doing it, he figured something out that if he paid attention with the hand pushing down, it helped him keep his balance better. Try it with me. We've got this side of our body doing this and pushing down with that other hand. And then the other side. You're doing a great job. You have such good balance. It took me a while to be able to do this regularly. One more time on the other side. Great job, everyone. Let's continue our journey and try to keep these animals in mind because Chen is going to need your help in just a few minutes. Well, Chen kept walking along. And before you knew it, he saw a group of monkeys playing on the edge of a forest next to the lake. Oh, and the monkeys were doing crazy things with their arms. They were flailing them all over the place and, and pretending to hit each other and push each other. And Chen thought, how am I supposed to remember a crazy troop of monkeys? Uh, but he put his hands out, sort of like this. Okay, and then he let one of his hands drift past his head. And he looked at it when it was behind him, behind his shoulder. And then he let it come forward, almost like he was pushing something off his palm. And then that hand was flat, and he watched the other hand go back. And before you know it, Shen was kind of reminding himself of playing like a monkey. And it felt pretty good. It felt really good in his shoulders. Are you doing it with me? Watch as one hand drifts back, the other hand turns over, we push, and we push again. Great job, one more. But Chen watched the monkeys for a few minutes and he laughed at them because they were a pretty wonderful sight to see. And then he, he turned a corner of the lake and he caught sight of something. And the something he caught sight of was a fish. And the fish jumped high up in the air and landed in the water. And Chen thought, I have to remember to tell grandmother about this. And so Chen thought, well, I watched this jump up in the air and go down into the water. So maybe I'll pretend 
this is the lake. And this other hand is going to go just over my head and I let it jump back into the water. And when I do that, I'm gonna lean forward a little bit and get a nice gentle stretch in my back. Let's try it on the other side. Here's the lake, are you with me? Now what happens? The fish jumps and lands in the water. Great, I find that it helps if when I make the lake, I stick one leg forward a little bit. And I keep the other leg back and I can get a nice gentle stretch from that. There's the lake and this fish. And it jumps up and goes back into the water. Well, Shen was very, very excited. He walked back towards his grandmother's house and he was feeling very good. He didn't really understand why. Uh, maybe it was the fact he was out in the sunshine or maybe it was all these weird movements he was doing to help him remember the animals to tell his grandmother. He got back to his grandmother's house and his grandmother said, well, what did you see on your walk? Oh, said Chen, grandmother, I saw so many things. I saw... <sighs> Chen was having a hard time remembering what he saw when he walked. Do, do, do any of you remember? the first thing that Chen saw on his walk around the lake. And you guys can type it in the chat. You can type it in the chat, that would be great. Anyone remember our first thing? Um, let's see, what, what? Oh, 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 yes, thank you all so much. A boy grooming a horse. The first thing I saw, said Chen, was a boy, mm -hmm. and he was parting a horse's mane. You guys remembered. Thank you. Our hands face each other, and we step to the side, and we part the horse's mane. That's great. Let's do two more of those. It might help us. And by us, I mean you and Shen and me remember the move. That's wonderful. Yes, the first thing I saw was a boy and he was grooming a horse. He was parting a horse's mane, grandmother. Oh, said grandmother, that sounds like a very good start to your walk. Uh, and what did you see next? Uh, next, next I saw, do any of you remember the second thing that Chen saw on his walk? Anyone? Let's see, but we had, they had the horse and then, then, aha, aha, yes, some of you do remember. The next thing he saw was a beautiful white crane. Remember our, our hands sort of face each other up here and it was drying its wings. So one palm goes down to the waist, the other opens up. We point our leg and have a nice stretch. Let's do it on the other side. Our palms face each other, sort of over at the side of our head and out a little bit. And we point our foot and we spread our wings. Nicely done. Let's do that just two more times. And then I'm going to guess that I'm going to need your help again because Chen has a little bit of trouble remembering the animals that he saw. What was next, said grandmother? Oh, um, next, uh, uh, after that beautiful white crane, I saw some of you are already remembering, yes, a dragon. I know it sounds crazy, grandma, said Jen, but I think I saw a dragon playing up in the clouds. And Chen did the motion that helped him remember the dragon playing high up in the clouds. I hope some of you are doing a fancy dragon. 
but even if you just let your hands trail across at the level of your eyes, that's terrific. And a nice twist at the waist. Wonderful, said grandmother. I believe in dragons, she said. So I am sure that you saw one high in the sky. What else did you see after the dragon? Do you remember what came after a, a, a dragon? You all remember so well. I am so impressed. It was something that Chen didn't like to remember, right? You remember Chen isn't very happy with this animal, but, oh, he said to his grandmother, I saw, I saw a snake. <laughs> and it curled its tail around a branch, and then it slithered down towards the ground. It curled its tail and it slithered down towards the ground. And he made a small circle with his fingers and pretended his other arm was a snake creeping down a vine or a branch or a part of the tree and going down. And he scooped his other hand up a little bit at the end. Fantastic. You all remember this so well. I'm so happy. Well, what next, said grandmother. Oh, um, right after I saw a snake, I saw, what was it I saw again? Oh, yes, it was. You remember the animal? So many of you do remember. Lit, lit, lit. Chen was so excited, he just started to show his grandmother. See if you remember this with me. I, I saw a Oh, standing near a barn, a golden rooster. It was standing on just one leg, grandmother. It looked very proud and tall. And it was there looking as though that entire barnyard was his own. And he was in charge of it. Let's try that one more time. Wow, I am so impressed that you remember these things and that you're so good at balancing. That's amazing. All right. Then Chen said, after I saw the roosters, hmm, I, 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 I saw something, um, I saw something silly. Who remembers the silly things I saw? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, I'm saying, oh, you guys are so good with your memories. I am so impressed. That's exactly what Chen saw, a silly group of monkeys playing. Do you remember how to do the monkey move? Mm-hmm, one hand, yeah. And what do I do with this other hand? Yes, exactly. It kind of drifts behind my head, and I'm almost pushing something right off of here. One hand drifts back, kind of goes past my ear and pretends it's pushing something off the other hand. You guys are doing so great with this. Let's do a couple more, just so we remember. And when I do it, I don't know if you can see or tell, but I bounce my body just a little bit. I let my knees bend and go up and bend again and bend and straighten just a little bit. It gives that idea of a playful monkey bouncing up and down. Wonderful, said Chen's grandmother. You saw so much. What else did you see on your walk? Some of you are already writing in the answer. Thank you so much. A fish. Uh, uh, there was a lake, said Chen. And he put that foot forward when he made the lake and took his other hand and he said, and there was a fish that jumped high into the air and landed and went deep into the bottom of the lake. He did it on the other side because he was so proud to have remembered that fish jumping and going into the lake. One more set, you and I together. Here we go. And bend gently at the waist. 
good job and bend gently at the waist. How do you feel? said Chen's grandmother. Well, you know it'll sound crazy, grandmother, but I feel great. I feel all loose and ready. That is because you imitated the animals. How do you think I got to be so old and still be so fit? said his grandmother. I watch the animals, I take their motions, and I do them myself. And this has kept me happy and strong. Well, from that day on, every day, Chen would rise up in the morning and he would do his animal exercises. And those animal exercises helped him feel so much better. And that is the journey of Chen. And you and I have been doing something called Tai Chi together, a very ancient form of exercise that's based on the movements of animals. And I hope you can remember the story of Chen, Chen's journey, and the animals that he met, and try those animals. Especially for a lot of us that are a little bit stuck at home these days, we're all staying good and safe and with our families, sometimes we don't get the movement that we really need. So Molly, I'm going to invite you back in because I'd love to open it up to some questions if we have time. If people have any questions that I could answer for them, I will try and tackle them. Yeah, that's great. Oh, um, the Birch family said they enjoyed it. Your memory is better than theirs. <laughs> Thank you, Birch family. And <laughs> family is yeah, they loved it. So does anyone have any questions for JT about Tai Chi or the story? Um, maybe you could mention if you would do this again in the mornings, because it is really good to do this in the morning. Why it's is Tai Chi good for you? That's a great question. That's a good question. So in traditional Chinese medicine, um, they believe that your body is filled with all these roads, just like your town is filled with roads. And if those roads are clear and don't have all kinds of junk on them, uh, there's no snow to be plowed, there, there's op open, clear roads, that everything travels better, like your blood and your oxygen and your lubricants and all the things your body needs. So doing Tai Chi keeps those roads nice and clear. If you live somewhere where there's a lot of snow, it's like Tai Chi helps to plow all those roads and keep them safe for things to journey on. So it's really very healthy uh, for your whole body and it's great to do some whole body movement. And how long have you been doing Tai Chi? That's a great question. I came to Tai Chi a little later in my life. Um, I probably have been practicing Tai Chi 10 years, maybe a little bit more than 10 years now. I practice something called Qigong and also Tai Chi. And they both have the same roots of, of animal movements. People in China were inspired by movements of animals and try to recreate them in their own bodies to stay healthy. So and 10 to 12 years, something like that. And Emily asked, how old is Tai Chi? Oh, Emily, wonderful question and a little controversial. So Tai Chi is based on something called Qigong. And we believe that Qigong is about 4,000 years old. But then Tai Chi came along much later than that. We think that Tai Chi maybe is a thousand years old, maybe almost 2,000, depending on who you listen to. So it's a little bit younger, but people practice Tai Chi and new Tai Chi forms are made up all the time. I, I learned a Tai Chi form this morning from someone who made up their own Tai Chi form, and you can too. Now that you know these animal forms, you can put them together any way you like and tell your own story while doing these movements. So thank you, that was a great question. And someone asked what the book was called, and I just put it in the chat. It's called Tai Chi for Kids, and I just yes. put the link to there for, for Amazon, but when we get our resource page, I'll make sure that I put that 
in there because it's a really great book. It's a really fun book. Um, the exercises in there, a couple of them are slightly different from uh, the way I tell the story. So one of these days, I'm going to have my own book, and I'm going to call it The Journey of Chen, and, and I'm going to try to use the story I told you today to help you and other kids relearn and, and practice their, their Tai Chi. But that book, um, Tai Chi for Kids, is a terrific book, and I think you'll have a lot of fun with it. And thanks, th and where did, oh, where, um where did Tai Chi come from? Great. So remember where Chen lived? It was high in the mountains in China. And that is where Tai Chi and Qigong started. We believe some of the movements started with simple people, everyday people. Other people believe that it started by monks who would frequently live on the sides of mountains and spend their days studying things who wanted to be more in touch with their bodies, who wanted to get exercise, who wanted to be a part of nature. So it comes to us through the Chinese tradition. And I love that so many things in our world come from nature. If you look back in a lot of cultures and a lot of, um, a lot of people's art and culture comes from nature. So thank you so much for reminding us about that JT and, and for teaching us a new way of moving and exercising. And I see lots of our families in here who have been joining us for so many uh, movement sessions and a lot of Connected North at Home. So they'll see you again. Um, and we're also going to see Marcy again for circus. So thank you so much for connecting. And we'll see, we might see some of the people in the, um, noise pollution session in a few minutes, or we might see you tomorrow when we have cockroaches, hissing Madagascar cockroaches. Yep, that's happening. And about beaks and burrows and food chains with a real live tarantula, a real live tarantula people. And wow. so we're, yeah, real live tarantula. That's, that's not in my house. <laughs> Thank you so much, JT and Katie. You've all been you wonderful. Thanks, everybody. Thank you for joining me today. Hope to see you again. Bye-bye. Thanks, JT. Thanks, you guys.